This is a video discussing a lot of the customization that can be done in the Zeta Sizer Nano Series software. So one of the first things I'd like to talk about are the workspaces. And your workspace is uh, can be selected uh, with this drop-down menu. And the workspace basically defines what uh, types of parameters are listed in the record view and what uh, report pages uh, or these tabs across the top of the screen are displayed. And so there's a lot of different default ones. You'll see a summary one that kind of shows all different types of measurements. And then there's measurement specific ones, um, such as the zeta potential one that gives you relevant tabs and relevant information for a zeta potential measurement. So you can customize all of these um, to meet your needs. And I've done a couple of them. You can see here um, there where I've displayed parameters that I would like to look at. What I would caution you is, is that this is a global change. And so if you have a lot of users using your system, what I would probably do is set up and save the default um, workspaces. But then also, if you want people to be able to create their own, they can do it on their own computer with their own software. You can download free from our website or they can display them on your computer just given, um, just saved with their new name. So what I would recommend is what you first do before anyone uses the system is go into these workspaces and save them somewhere as the default workspace. So how do we do that? We would, um, let's say I'm on this sizing report. This is the default sizing report and I wanna export that workspace. Uh, so export that, go ahead and save it in some sort of location. Um, I like to save mine in this export data uh, folder, which is defaulted in the, in the Zeta Sizer software, and give that a name. So I'm going to probably call this default size and save that. That way, this never disappears. You can always go back and put it back into the software, and you'll have it defaulted um, just the way it was. But what this also does is that if I then, okay, let's say I want to put that back in the software. I need to import that workspace and find where I've saved that and give that its workspace name. So this is default size, um, do not change or something like that if you have multiple users. And so now what you'll see is here's the default size and it says do not change next to it so that if you have multiple users, they wouldn't be changing things about this particular one. But if they did, uh, you could always go back to that original one that's still the default one. Now what this allows me to do is let's uh, create our own. Um, let's uh, look at the sizing one, for example, and create our own. So if we go to size, now we can make some changes and then we can save it. So let's uh, show you how to make some changes. So if we go to this configure button right next to the drop down menu, you can see how you can customize this. Now, the first uh, tab here is basically choosing what types of records you want to be uh, displayed in this particular workspace. So you could like, let's say you're doing size and zeta potential results and maybe you want to be able to display both of those results. You could do that. Or if you just want this to solely be a sizing workspace, you can make one of those as well. So the next tab is where I'm choosing what parameters I would like to display and in what order I would like to display them in. So there's a whole host of many different types of display parameters that you can choose from and you can look through these um, and see what makes sense for you. I'll, I'll point out a few of them that I really like for sizing measurements, which include the attenuator setting, um, which will tell me kind of a little bit of information about well, how much do I have to attenuate the laser for this sample, which gives me an indication of is this really dilute for the instrument or is this really concentrated for the instrument? Um, probably measurement date and time is a good one to display. Um, you may want to, to display your serial number of your instrument in case you ever have any issues um, or questions about the data uh, and the instrument and you write into our help desk, they're always gonna ask you for your serial number. So that's an easy way to always just have it on on your on your record view if you like. There's other ways, of course, of, of displaying it in the software as well, but that's a really easy one. Another one for sizing 
we can go down to the size tab here and there's all different types of things that I can put here. I could look at how good my fit is of my cumulants or distribution fit. Um, if you're familiar with D values, um, like a D50, D90 value, um, that's a volume based distribution. Um, you can display all of those as well. You can see some of those that I've, I've put over here. So to get these these values um, to display, basically, let's say I want to dis display my derived count rate, which is basically the uh, overall intensity of scattering from my sample um, with the attenuator taken into account to that. And so if I want to add this, I just pop it over here. You see I already have one of those over there. Pop it over to this list and then I can um, select where I would like to see that in my parameter list. Like maybe this is really important to me so I want to look at that first and have that be the first thing displayed. You can do all sorts of different parameters um, in here. Your PDI of course, your PDI width, um, and you can make this fully customized um, to whatever you would like to see over here. Another thing um, would be the report pages. So these are the reports that are listed across the top of the screen. So there's a lot of different reports in here and you can actually go and create your own reports as well and edit these reports if you if you so choose. But um, you can edit all of these different reports and then of course select um, which one, which how you would like them displayed in order. So I do have some people wanting to look at the number distribution, although I, I generally frown upon that with DLS since you are only measuring the intensity distribution uh, for raw data. But this is how you would display your number distribution if you wanted to see that as well. So again, I can move this up so that I could put it first or third or add it to my list um, that would display here. And there's a lot of other ones. Um, another one that I'll point out is the size trend. Um, and I think I've already displayed that one as well so it's probably already checked but here's the size trend and so um, that's one where like let's say you're doing a time study and you want to display um, maybe you want to display uh, Z average size as a function of different uh, different samples and so you can easily set up a, a quick graph in the software all right, once you're happy with all this, just click OK, and then you'll see those changes populate. So now we see we have our number distribution um, added, and also we have our size trend on there as well. So at this point, what I would do, I would probably go in and save this workspace. And so I would save that just as we did before, say export workspace. Make sure that you're saving that in a um, place that you know. And so maybe I could call this my customize workspace. Maybe you probably give it your names if, since you have a lot of other people using your instrument. Save that and then import that back into your uh, workspace queue. Or uh, if you did this on the computer uh, with the instrument and let's say you wanted to go off on your own computer and, and you wanted that exact same workspace. Um, you actually go take that workspace, put it onto your computer and just import it into your workspace. And so every time you go to your um, look at your results, they'll always dis be displayed the exact same way. So that's how you customize your workspace to add parameters, add different pages. Um, and what this allows me to do is that now um, I have this nice table that I've already created in the software and if I just want to pop that out to Excel I can just copy and paste it directly into Excel and then I have my nice um, table already arranged in the way that I would like to see it. Um, so this is basically how you would do a lot of the customization. I'll mention quickly um, some other parameters for Zeta Potential um, that I think might be interesting for you to look at. So let's go into the configure and go to the parameters. So uh, some of the things that you'll see in here are quite similar like your measurement, uh, date and time and all of those things. Um, but here are some that are specific to Zeta Potential. And one of them that I'd like to point out, of course, derived count rate and attenuator both play a role here as well. Um, but one of them that I would like to point out is the reference beam count rate. So basically for Zeta Potential, um, we route part of, uh, you know, part of the beam goes through your sample and is looking at the scattering from your sample. But 
We also um, have a beam splitter that routes some uh, of the beam around your sample. And you can actually measure that reference beam count rate and track that over time with your instrument as a way of gauging the health of your instrument. Make sure everything's properly aligned in the system. Uh, make sure that your laser intensity is up nice and high. And that will give you a good indication of the health of your instrument um, for a zeta potential measurement specifically.